Okay, fumble them. <laughs> a warm, warm welcome and greetings from um, the TNN TV. And um, today, the 7th of um, March 2022, me where they talk to Una. Now, my name Prince Emil Koma. And we live stream simultaneously on Facebook and YouTube. So if you check which channel on YouTube and don't forget for subscribe, you go see say we the stream this live video day as well as on um, um, Facebook. I got to apologize to Fambulem because we guest Mr. Mohamed Warisi, of course, get last minute of time technical issues. So you not be able for you not able for join the platform this evening. And um enough for him be very professional or professional I for say for let we not air the program at the last minute they even though for them put out a detail but a responsible channel will always come and can talk on the issue a little bit so probably fambulem this will be one of the shortest um, um segments that we've ever had on a major broadcast we now on something really serious in terms of with finance laws or taxation laws now the country involving gst the walkout protests or the shop closing protests on last Thursday by business people let me in Sierra Leone as opposed to the GST. So like I said, I'm just going to brush on it quickly. Maybe this broadcast will take me about 15 or 20 or 25 minutes. No more than 30 minutes. And I doubt whether 30 minutes. But what I be want for the family to understand is like um, when this issue happened about the GST, I feel very vindicated, by the way, because... Me and many friends, we can get the conversation or the arguments or debate, if you like. It's like um, what is going on. And we know say many things now in our country is politicized, including the taxation is politicized. But most people take them of the view, say, well, now the opposition, I mean, they try to undermine that. Well, whether that's the opposition, the point will make me for say that I do feel vindicated is because in the end, we now know, say, even the NRA boss or the NRA hierarchy engage the people, the business people. Because my position then is if hundreds of people walk away in a protest, all their shop then and close in protest to something where you want introduced as a government, as an authority, then definitely there is something to that way you need for listen to. And I made this point strenuously to my friends and family. But then seem for border on the point is like, no, this is politics and what have you. And the reason again why I say I feel vindicated because as I they do my basic research before they come to the program, I realize say, the NRA from the boss the hierarchy of the NRA has been engaging business people because waiting and land generally from this GST taxation program where they try for bring come to Sierra Leoneans them is there is a lot of ignorance which I completely agree with because this not been my point of argument. Do the people fully understand this new structure owner they try for introduce? Oh, they introduced this structure since 2009. No, I'm talking about it holistically. Holistically, do the people understand, the business people understand this? Because there are two aspects to it, if not three. One, the ignorance. Two, you get people that we understand that, but then they try for be dubious in their activities. In other words, trick government out of um, revenue. So they understand how for go around the books. So the electronic thing whether they try for introduce, of course, go tally everything and it's electro electronically transferred to the NRA servers. So as the point of sale they happen. NRA, they receive them, um, not in servers. So you go get people and they will monitor them, or even not in the den, but they can later harness that report day and, um, you know, um, um, break them up and then arrive at waiting and suppose or waiting in the lookout for C. So this is the problem. So Fambulem, it's obvious that I don't introduce the program, but when we watch the flyer, when I see exactly what you will talk about. So it's about um, um, the GST which na goods and services tax na Sierra Leone. Every country get a taxation regime or a taxation system. I not think, say, anybody of a sound mind 
go oppose to a taxation system na a country. It all boiled down to the information which the people them were supposed to pay the tax at the time has. If you not get the right information where they are left in doubt, and you as the authority, you've not allayed their fears because some of it is based on fears. Some of it is basically people them when they try to deprive government of hard earned revenue. We know that. But all said and done, for government for have total, total overall responsibility, not the duty to have informed or organize whether or workshops or whatever you want for column in which the masses of the people, in this case, the business people, will be informed as to waiting to come. It's not like we can continue for go with, oh, you know, we've been not introduced this and the last government since 2009, we've been not introduced them up to this point. We know anecdotally that the system was introduced but not carried out through and through. And when it comes to money spending, people can be cautious as to how then either they spend the money or taxes then we then get for pay. Some people are apprehensive of the 15% tax with government, they ask them for pay. And why? Some people then they say, well, the business, if it's a hundred million and down, then we should not be paying these taxes. This 15% it should be less. Others are saying, well, if they're above and whatever, then they are the ones that are supposed to be paying the 15%. So you can see there's a lot of ignorance around this. But I'll create some background quickly. Like I say again, few people are not join. It's just a quick one. This broadcast is not going to be long because Mr. Mohamed Warisi, who was supposed to join me on this program tonight for explain to Fambulem the taxation regime, what he mean, how we arrive at USA, we arrive, what he been the workout protest about. Unfortunately, because of technical reasons, he cannot join the program tonight, but we will try for bring and come another day because his views will have to be heard. And in fact, this gives us the opportunity for bring somebody else. We at least then they run opposite to each other so that we get a good debate and I go act as a middleman between them. But what did you go on, family? Um, would they talk about something regarding the single standard rate than a GST, the general um, um, or goods and services tax in Sierra Leone? Which rates then put them at 15%? What have been they talk about earlier on? See, some family opposed to that 15% there because it's just too much for them. But it's like now, who do they pay? And why, if you not they pay, why are you the worry? But let me remember say, all goods and services we are provided for in the country. We they talk about Salon now, let me get this clear. It's of benefit to the use of Sierra Leoneans, any tax paid, any goods and services we and then provide na Sierra Leone is used for the benefit of the Sierra Leonean people or the country as a whole. And then services that I will talk about, it also include goods the way we the import. I remember at some time, myself, self, na been businessman on a low scale, was a businessman, not on a huge scale, on a low scale container and etc. And we pay taxes at the port. At the port, we pay taxes. I remember we container, first I not being realized that, and the person we been the run me container can always take the container back, not knowing that when you take the container back, you they get return for taking the container back. That's like um, um, when they assess the tax where you pay and the deduction, deduction can be made and then they pay you back. But later on, I realized that. But the bottom line is taxes were being paid. So what thing happen, even when you care, your goods go down, that goods, they go attract tax. And that tax, the way you they pay, now, towards the benefit of the country, that money the way you pay is for the benefit of the country. And you get for pay that money the, at the standard rate, at the standard rate. And waiting at the standard rate, where they cause all this confusion, is 15%. And this is not law, by the way, but we'll come to that um, um, very, very shortly. You see, there are exceptions, though. And Fambule need for understand this. So not to everybody they pay tax. There are thresholds, or in terms of the hierarchy, or people the way they import, 
or it depends on who you day. But people that they care goods and services into the country, not to their all they pay tax. But the law goes specify exactly who they're not supposed for pay tax. Let charitable organizations they wouldn't pay tax to the government of Sierra Leone. But a lot of others, big business people, then they pay tax to um, um, the government of Sierra Leone. But until the law that governs that particular area explicitly specify Uda not subjected to GST, then everybody with care goods going to the country will have to pay. Okay? They will definitely have to pay. What is basically happening at the country, this BNT and Fambulem, is really significant in terms of the times that we are in. You see, we cannot allow we as citizens for let we country just the BN. This is the 21st century. Other countries are making waves and waves and waves of development and innovative ideas and moving forward, meeting the demands of the 21st century. There are those who are very powerful where they make their way up to the moon. There are those that are equally powerful where they shoot rockets, you know, where they go act as space satellites somewhere up there. We not get our technology day, and we still argue about tax, and tax is supposed to be of some benefit to the nation. So on um, last Thursday, when the government embark on something where Ebenon decides, say, well, this is the time that we're going to carry this out, which is about introducing machines, GST for general, um, I mean, goods and services tax machine. Machine them, we go calculate the taxes paid, which are connected to the servers belonging to the NRA, the National Revenue Authority. People then find it difficult for contemplate the entire exercise. As a consequence of that, people then close their shops. Imagine, it's been a while, but this was a concerted effort that people then close their shop. And my argument at the time to me many friends, and I'm very much social media active, I said, if a lot of people then lock their shop in protest to something, then it go good for their people and sit down and try to understand the protesters' their position. Why are you protesting? Only after you will have heard why the protesters are protesting, then you will be able to make a rational decision. In this case, the government of Salon say, well, they can't introduce the machine there because after all, it is about time that we digitalize with taxes. We know that we the lost billions of leons on a daily basis that has to be stopped because the country is cash trapped and we need cash and one of the way for generate revenue now through taxes you bring your goods can the country you pay tax you sell you pay tax you go buy you pay tax the country where i am for example we get we owe they call that value added tax everything where you buy whether i go buy petrol for putting on my motor car whether i go buy bread for me picking them or milk for me picking them for it they always will have taxes on it. But then there is a methodology. And the countries that will try to make comparison to, they've established this a long time ago. So it's on smooth sailing. Sometimes people complain about how the tax, the taxes can be hiked. But whenever it's hiked, what thing they can do, they can provide an explanation. Remember, say, wages can grow along with GDP, not on an equal basis, but I mean, where I say wages they grow along with GDP and with um, um, inflation, in fact, that's the word, then you can understand, say, government can try for balance. Then two opposite things there are because as inflation they grow, prices of services and goods definitely they go up as well. And when it goes up, if your salary not go up, then that means there is a shortfall because you won't be able to cope. Now, I cut your put ya and strangulate. And if you say you defeat um, um, corruption, this is where you have to be prudent in terms of your approach to the very things that we you they talk about. Because if you not adjust that and somebody get for meet up with him bills, then definitely they will begin for look other ways or other side in other way how for meet up with them bill. Having said this, ladies and gentlemen, when they talk about the GST, one of the goods and services tax, we recently, the government of Salon say, 
um, we need for digitalize, digitalize rather we taxation system, which is not new. I think it goes back to 2009 of December or somewhere around 2009, with the then government being decided, say, we need for begin for upgrade with taxation system. But of course, the reason why it took this long are many. But one of the reasons is things has to be put in place, work gradually. And I make this government decide, say, well, we have come a long way. Now is the time for let we bring the machines into place so that we go able for get the receipts or the returns or the data and then receipts and they or the sale so that we go able for determine say people then pay them tax and equally so we go able for count the tax system way people um, um, pay tax on domestic consumption of imported and locally produced goods and services is paid on a percentage um, um, basis family i don't say this and i say i'm again because it's quite quite important for let we keep for um, um say um. from the first of september 2009 that's what i was saying the GST was applied at a single rate. So you see, Fambule, it is not this government that introduced this because there is a lot of talk around who introduced it, uh, introduced this system and the time that it's been introduced, which is very interesting um, um, timing. But the idea is this goes back a long way. 2009 is quite a long way. That's almost 13 years ago when this was um, introduced. Prior to the introduction of this GST, what in me exist now a variety of taxes. Instead of one go, we may get about three or four of them taxation system there. So once um, um, somebody they try for join the platform, don't know how they get the. I wonder who is this? This might not be my guest, but let me see. I go find out soon whether that's the guest and whether I would in this person one for C. So it replaced four or three or five different taxation way been to take place prior to the introduction of this single system. Now make them call them a single system, the goods and services tax. Okay. It replaced MMA, um, um, the import sales. Then we get import sales. And then you get import sales tax. Every time when you bring something in, in your own separate, you get for pay that taxation day. Every time we you um, um, do some domestic transactions, there is also a taxation for that. The entertainment industry, everything regarding to entertainment, there is also an entertainment um, kind of um, um, tax. And then there's also the tax for restaurant and food. Every restaurant and food business is entitled for pay that mm then your tax. And then you get messages. Imagine that go fall under communication. So you see about four, five, or six different kind of taxation. And this is kind of um difficult for government. And even the people where they pay the tax, and even the people where they handle the taxation, I mean, different, different kind of taxation. And then you get for separate, whether this now for restaurant and food business, whether this one are for messaging and communication, or whether this one are for the import and sales of goods and services. So that alone was too complex. So for make them, you know, you're like streamline them into one, yeah, this one look. Government decide for introduce the GST goods and services tax. We go back, like I've been to say, to 2009. 2009. Now this thing go back to. So the person we've been to try for join, unfortunately, <laughs> don't disappear again. I wish them may appear so that we go talk about these things they will want to talk about. Maybe they're familiar with um, tax laws. Okay. And just for reminder, when we we'll talk about recent happening as alone, where we forget um, um, a guest, Mr. Mohammed Warisi, will for being can help with for explain 
exactly what in a go on, what in a GST, what do you mean? When was it introduced? Why was it introduced? Why why is it there is an apprehension from members of the business community in Sierra Leone? Why did business people and walk away there all lock their shop them because of government said they introduced the GST? But one thing I make this argument that many, many platforms them, and my argument was bordered on the facts. Say. It was just common sense that if a lot of people they kick against something. Imagine a lot of people, different. Somebody they sell iron rod, somebody they sell pipe, somebody they sell cement, somebody they sell tile, you know, whatever, some form of business, and then kick against that. They all come together and unify in a way against one entity, in this case, against government. It's obvious that something is wrong. And the best way for the government go forward with this, which the government did, Okay, and this was my argument. Say, government will have to listen. When you citizens then protest, that means there is a grievance. And for understand the grievance means you have to listen. Sometimes uncomfortable, but you get for sit down and listen. And lo and behold, the NRA hierarchy were responsible for this taxation problem. Then go and engage the businessman them and then listen. And wait till they understand. A lot of waiting been to happen and why people have been back away from this taxation system is because of ignorance, plenty of ignorance. I know they say Sabi, Master Sabi people and all the inside you, where they are aim and objective now for deceive government because government don't they lost billions and up to today as we speak, they do lose billions and the day we shop owners then lock their shop, government equally lost billions of leons. So government get for listening to these people quickly because it get for continue for generate revenue. But at the same time, it get for convince these people that this is why we are doing what we are doing for the benefit of the country and the people of the country. Because now, if such a system is embraced and we use them, we go able for no almost tax people and pay just at the clip of the finger. Because all then taxation and the way they happen through that machine, it they go directly to a server belonging to the NRA. We the people that we then charge with the responsibility for collect money from business people. Them, in other words, revenue generation from taxation paid. The NRA na irresponsible. What in this also they do, it they help for reduce the cost. Because remember, I mentioned I think about four or five different system of taxation where government may collect, whether a restaurant and food, whether a businesses, whether an import, whether a messages and things like that. Three, four, five different ways for collect tax. So government try for streamline them by introducing this one system called GST goods and services um, tax. So that also help for cut down the cost of administration because this can be expensive. Either you get for add more people because the, the nature of the taxation we do is kind of complex. And then that means you go get for employ more people and pay more people. Now, when you do and so by streamlining the entire effort, it makes it simple because you just they engage one set of people and probably even less people. So the present system um, um, then was some indirect taxation regime now they go on so the introduction of this system be involved few things so you get for here is some acronyms like ecr which means that electronic cash register most of we will leave now the first world the leg for column go understand when you talk about ecr then get boku boku code them or acronym them in terms of this entire exercise. So the ECR is an electronic cash register. The electronic cash register, now where you go buy something, because everything is tallied and the good system, they inside that system they, that when you buy something, then put in the calculation inside the machine, that machine they, they able for deduct the tax uh, or take the tax away from the buyer and electronically compute them so it did the system so they can type and give you a receipt. You see, the difficulty here is at some point there was talk, even though this is the politic side of things, and no one go back to that. At some point, people, I mean, they say receipt, not to evidence. 
and we know those who were saying receipt not to evidence. And this is where some people can one get upset with the channel. But with the move before, we don't go now this, that. No, no, you haven't acknowledged that as yet. And these things, they have got repercussions, cause and effect. You deny say receipts, not to evidence. Then now you want to introduce a, a formula of receipt to people and say, if you do this, now this go generate in form of a receipt. And that receipt, we can read them because what you put in, now in come out. Computer kind of logic. But this go along with the time when you be not deny say receipt, not to evidence. So then this entire exercise then become difficult for comprehend, if you know what I mean, Vambulem. But today we we'll talk about a very special thing and we get for compromise there, issue then day, just so we go learn how for go um, um, kind of forward. So the ECR, now the electronic cash machine or register, if you like, where if you go to a shop, the machine, the, the electronic machine, you come by, then put in what you want. Once you put on there, it generates the price. It deducts the tax. The tax is inclusive in there, but it deducts them separately. So if you read your receipt, this is what makes a receipt an evidence. If you read the receipt, the receipt then tells you time of purchase, MM, place of purchase, and then how much is being deducted. Yeah, so in the end, you go see VAT value added tax. So then separate waiting, you actually pay for waiting you buy. Not how much you pay from waiting you buy and waiting and deduct from there. And when you tally both, it gives you the sum total where you pay. But when they go deduct, and I mean, when they go calculator now, the tax people, because it's already there. The 50, like Sigalio, for example, 15%. So that 15% is deducted from the purchase. And that goes to government. The rest stays with the businessman. This is the point, but there was plenty of ignorance. And the 15%, a lot of people say, is huge. There's also a system called the CIS. I talk about, um, we will talk about a few acronyms. The CIS is a certified invoicing system. So first of all, we talk about the ECR, which is the electronic cash register. Now, briefly, on the certified invoicing system, which is the CIS. This system is devised for use in businesses for efficient manage, management rather, of sales um, um, transactions. That's what the CIS is used for, for efficient management of sales transaction. It's all receipted. This is the significance of receipt. Now we see all over like Kusai Media and other people and they would only hear this conversation on social media. So everything is on receipt. So we government one for C receipt. Of course, there is a duplicate. Remember, say where you go buy, like yeah, so where you go buy. One receipt is being retained by the shop owner, and another is generated and given to the consumer or the buyer. So waiting left yonder, now the customer. I mean, at the shop owner in your for in your record that is kept mostly. If you watch uh, the shop owner and get some salsa, then they put them because all of that will be checked through the taxation system. How much you sell? How much people they can buy? So you see, there is a generation of information we can tally and make a country sort of um, um efficient, sort of transparent, and sort of um. um um, um professional accountability process a lot of it a lot of it that's what happened in such processes so that's what happens at the, um, the management of sales transaction you also get another acronym called the sdc the sdc is the sales data controller the sales data controller the sales data controller and i'll talk about this now so you will sell, you also generate that receipt there, you get for keep that receipt there for further MM scrutiny, or if you will like, the auditing process. Fambule, when I see you say auditing and the rest come inside, why is necessary? Why all of this necessary? Because it gives us a process of accountability and transparency. So we know how much was made, and if it not reached to how much was made, 
then we can ask questions. So there's also another acronym called the ESD. That's the Electronic Signature Device. A lot of Fambule we tune in now know exactly what they talk about. This device now in connected to the CIS. When I remember say we talk about the CIS, which is the Certified Invoicing System. So the ESD, which is the Electronic Signature Device, is connected to this CIS, which is the Certified Information, I mean, Invoicing System. So when I see the connection, just one single streamline sort of um, um, system. Now it embody all length in there just for make transactions smooth, auditing smooth, so that we're able for understand transparency and accountability, accountability rather, through the system there. So the ESD, which is the electronic signature device, is a device which is connected to the CIS. It doesn't only end there. It also has something to do with the signature on the receipt or the signing of a receipt. It's all a receipted thing because the receipt, like I say earlier on, some people and deny say receipt not to evidence, but this just prove why receipt is an evidence because it can be used in a court of law, by the way. A receipt. A receipt proves a lot. Whose kind of transaction when hap we happen? When it happened? Who say it happened? By whom? Everything is signature in there. Some are just coded. Some are just letters. Others are words. So it gives you a date and a time. Who, where, when. This is exactly what it happen. So another point of it is the storing receipt information. So you see, it's all about receipt, receipt, receipt. The storing of information is on the receipt which I just spoke about earlier. Who, when, where, what. Who that sell to me? Waiting at the name of the shop. Who side the shop day? How much o'clock they sell to me? Who's day where they sell to me? Who's date where they sell to me? Waiting they sell to me? How much I pay them? How much the thing cost me? How much waiting I give them? How much I give them? Waiting at the change if they give me change. You see the importance, Fambulem? Very, very important. And the last one on the ESD is the sending of receipt information to NRA server. Remember, see, I talked about the NRA server earlier on. So as that transaction did it take place, because it's electronically uh, and it's computer, basically. So as it generates that receipt, it will go to the, NRA, to the server of the NRA because they are kind of connected. So the NRA, they get a duplicate receipt of the transaction. So it depends on the period in which the NRA does their calculation. I don't know that, but it could depend on when they do their calculation. But the idea is they get all within the need and that reduces the burden of administration. So you spend less money and you get less staff for do that because everything is computer generated. As that person they do in receipt yonder or in point of sale POS, now, so they receive the generator, you see, they put an inside our electronic machine, the counter machine. But up, 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 type. Uh, reports don't go straight to um, um, NRA. Report don't go straight to NRA. And Fambule, what is significant about this entire thing is it's legitimate, it's legal. By the laws of the country, it is legitimate. And they talk about the Finance Act law. We've seen a couple of violations lately for the last three, four years. I mean, we can go beyond that. This does not mean that other people and before this administration did not abuse the finance system or finance laws. Yes, they did. But like I say, four years on of one government, I go like for pay attention to that government four years and not get confused with um, um, comparative basis for go begin bring other person we've been in a power 11 year or seven years ago as opposed to possibly don't match on a power four years on instead of asking them what have you done or what did you do why did you do what you did or things like that but then you want to conflate them with um, um an administration that's been gone out of power for four years when waiting to happen now is on by one and one only government, which is the government of His Excellency um, Retired Brigadier Julius um, Madabio. 
So these things, you know, yeah, they are by law. The finance um, um, law, the finance act of um, um, you can get one when I've been 2019, and then they upgrade them, um, you know, yeah, for reflect time. And also, they have this conversation with somebody else on a different basis in terms of um, um, rules, the rules based system in terms of law. Some laws, then they can do they just lie dormant. They're not can become active until something ever happened. But some are so old that the way they were designed, those situations that will tend to trigger the activity of such law does not exist any longer. So those laws will either have to be deleted or amended for reflect the time. Such is the case in this particular case. So you get the finance law, I think, of um, 2019. And when the Miwan gets certain things into place, that was amended, Section 34 in particular, of the Finance Act of 2020. And what you say is about G a, a focus on GST tax. And because they talk about GST tax, this is why exactly I kind of um, bring them up it kind of replace the particular section, section 34 again, but of the old act, finance act. Fambulem, um, this na then TNN Media Empire um, platform, they come to on today, the 7th of um, March, 2022. And me where they talk to on a, me now on a humble host and presenter, Prince Emil. Chroma. So there's a lot around this GST tax we government want for introduce. There's a lot of ignorance. And when I made my arguments earlier on, there's a lot that I said about ignorance. I had a strong feeling that this was one of the things that was affecting um, the reaction of people back home. They don't understand this thing better. They are apprehensive. Very apprehensive, 15%, and then do the calculation, 50% of whatever, then find out, say, it's too wide. Who shoulders this bill? Why should I? Where, I mean, don't go buy down, and I don't pay me taxes. And in some cases, now we know, not to you get for pay the tax, now the posse we can buy, because you don't pay your taxes to government. But we person they can buy, and as long as you go through that electronic system, point of sale POS, it generates automatically that 15% tax, which is deducted from that sale. So at the end of a period, the NRA, the National Revenue Authority, go do an auditing and no say 50 billion has been accumulated by a particular business or businesses and that money there because it's been paid. Every 10th person go by, then pull and come on, then pull and come on. That's government's money where it can use for alleviate poverty, suffering, or development normally of the nation. So that money will have to be paid. So like I say, in 2020, the Finance Act, a sort of reshape the older one for reflect modernity, especially with the introduction of the GST goods and services um, um, tax. So what do we know back by the law is say, this um, um, every registered business shall in the ordinary course of business maintain an electronic cash register as may be specified by the commissioner. So that's the commissioner of the NRA. And now the GST law now in the CSO inside the 2020 Finance Act. And when you say every business shall in the ordinary course of business retain a cash register, same thing now with the try for say. In law, when you say shall, then I must than a must. So in this particular 2020 Finance Act, it says that every registered business shall in the maintain, I mean in the ordinary course of business, maintain an electronic cash register. What is this electronic cash register? Then another machine where they see don't pant up your counter, where John can buy, where Sampa can buy, Yebu can buy, Saleh can buy, Santigi or Momo can buy. This is exactly who side and go put in waiting you can buy, who side and go take your payment and um, calculate and right inside there, the machine is already programmed for remove waiting, supposed for be removed, we belong to government when at the 15% tax. That's how straightforward it is. And that money that goes to government. And then the rest, you know, yeah, where the goods cost is paid to the, I mean, it's deducted from that transaction day. 
and then your change is given, and everything then that you receive, point of sale, time of sale, day of sale, date of sale, and then you name it. In that little receipt, everything is in there. This encompasses um, transparency and accountability. So like I say again, Fambulem, what may actually happen is plenty of ignorance. So shop then close. But what in the NRA do or the authorities did was engage. And this is exactly what I was saying. That's why I feel so vindicated, so impressed, and so satisfied that that was the position that I took because it wasn't rocket science. It was as simple as ABCD. That if a group of people come together, a significant group of people who weigh or has, you know, yeah, some wherewithal for cause problem. In this case, lock the shop and deprive government of revenue. Imagine not a one shop or two shop. Shops. So generally, business owners decided for close the shop because they don't appreciate this talk about GST and 15% and etc. So I advocated that more education needed to be done. Friends that I spoke to or spoke with, then your position, then politicize them. In fact, judgment was being made. All oh, this thing are politics. All oh, this thing are all people's Congress. Now the opposition are in there under this thing. It's like, okay, they might very well be under them. And this was my position. They might very well be under them. But these are groups of people that potentially belong to different political persuasions. Not necessarily one-sided, different particular persuasions. You can't tell me that all the shops that were closed belong to one party who was influencing the situation. Although I read somewhere um, um, that definitely it was one party that was influencing um, these people because some people had seen it as politics, and I'm not ruling that out. But the idea that every one of those people, the large body of shop owners within the municipality of Freetown, shut their shops down on Monday, uh, on Thursday in protest of this new or the introduction of a GST machine. Why? That would be the first question. And to understand why means you have to engage. You have to engage. This is where Giorgio is far better than war, war, far better. And what happened, as I understand now, the government engaged these traders, these business people, and once again, explained to them, it's not like 2009, because that's what I was hearing. But then we don't introduce this thing from 2009, 2010. Even this new government will come in, don't they introduce things and don't they lecture and teach, you know, yeah, the people. But why did the people walk out? Why? They don't like the government. That's why they walked out. Are they willing to close their business? Because it's a kind of um, lose-lose and in some instances, win-win. Some might be greater in terms of the winning or the losing. And at the same time, some might be um, um, lesser in the losing or the winning. So why would somebody want to encourage that? And if you want to encourage that, it's going to be for a short time, which implies that you have got leverage. If you haven't, why would you do it? So what do we understand? Government say, I go engage the people, which is the most plausible thing for do at that particular time. Because government says no one trouble I hate. 1,000 people in lockdown shop, 2,000 people in lockdown shop A, eh? this not trouble. But until they see, as with the year, he say, not something when they don't understand and this and that. So let we engage them and let we disseminate the information more, engage them and give them more information that they most likely need. Because apparently from government side, they're not thinking say, the people and they get the message. So they engage the people and explain to them now, as I understand, the tension that was there has either died down altogether or there's just minimal effect left. So you see how important fumble this is on engagement. Very, very um, um, sort of important. 
So when they closed their shops on Thursday and government engaged them during the course of the week, now they've come to understand the position of government, the operation of GST, its meaning, its benefits, how, who, and etc. So the point now is um, um, a little bit more calm down and a little bit um, um, kind of um, um, different. So there was a lot of um, um, shortcomings. Excuse me, a lot of um, um, apprehension, a, le a lot of misgiving. That's why it's good for a government to be forthcoming to its people. Because when you're forthcoming to, its, to your people, what happens then when issues come up in which there are question marks being raised, you know, because of your principal stance, people are not going to be pointing fingers at you or towards you or most likely your citizens because they know what you stand for, that you are accountable, that you are efficient, that you are proficient and you are meticulous and you know exactly what your game plans are. So finally, what we hear from them people there is the um, the traders them. You see, so they may get concerns. And one of the concerns, as I understand them, na um, um, businesses or entities, we get 100 million from the shop, I mean, the sales down, not up. Anything between 100 million down should be removed or the threshold of 15% taxation should not apply to them. Government in its infinite wisdom, they say, and because they want for the people and get along, and I believe the gov um, 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 government make the proposal to them that which you wanna say we've listened and we've we've um, embraced that, and in the first place, not to so we've been the say. Fambulele, we just take we only um, um advert for tonight, and we will be right back. Do not church. Do not touch the dial. Thank you. Shock you, shock you, shock you, shock you, Wow. I like the setup and deco. Quite impressive. <laughs> You've not seen anything yet. Wait until you taste it. I can't <laughs> wait. In a sense. Money make him Look at that. <laughs> I am sharper than knife, I am sharper than nail, them are small like ant, I am bigger than will. My baba gonna lift you up. Nobody, nobody will make you drop. Nobody will make you drop. Um, in Brixton, we do more of um, African food and seafood as well. Um, in Peckham, we do more of African food. A reception or function of any type. This is the place for you. Just do your booking on time and we can book catering for you. So, Fambulem, uh, again, uh, this is not the final episode. Now, just um, um, a few minutes, you know, about five minutes left. And I'm happy that I'll be able to do this despite um, um, we guest for today pulling out. So, just a few quick announcements. On tomorrow, we we'll ask Fambulem for tuning because um, there's a guy you might know that is called Sam King. Um, he says that he's the founder. He's the founder of the Sons and Daughters of All People's Congress, very critical of the party itself, have said many, many things. Luckily for we, we get on tomorrow, so we go engage him on these things. The interview is going to be largely based on things that he said on his audio. So we just get for, now that we go to the play to him, so there's nothing strange. Um, we should have help at two on, um, we program on Ukraine, the the confrontation or the ongoing war between russia and ukraine part two should be this wednesday but because we get a very very strong guest who is sort of um pro because we already get a cone in person of mr um, um ibari political ibari who most of you i believe will know this time around we won't forget a cone and the guy where we get 
for the meantime, we get few people that we come through, by the way, because we've been put out an appeal out there generally, which we don't normally do. But because this is um, um, an exceptional broadcast and a special one in many respects, and we'll be on hold on this Wednesday, so we decide for put out um, a call if there's anybody interested who wants to play the con role. But anyway, we've got someone, so we decide for push the show to a Sunday. But tonight, we are talking about the taxation st system in Freetown, Sierra Leone, the introduction of digitalized taxing, including machines, which will be able to generate transactions. But it turns out that most Sierra Leoneans, they kick against that. They close their shops and in a walkaway protest, telling the government that we are not satisfied with what you are introducing. We don't understand what you are introducing. The government in itself has decided to engage these people and the government has indeed engaged these people. And that engagement is producing a lot of fruitful results. Unfortunately for us, we don't have our guest here tonight, Mr. Mohamed Warisi, who was meant to help us to understand the situation. So unfortunately, we have to do without him, but we've got roughly about two minutes left. So waiting government do, and which is quite impressive, and we hope that this model will be used going forward when there's a feud, when there's a disagreement between people or people versus government or vis-a-vis -vis whichever way comes first. Engagement is better than war. When I say war, like violence and intimidation and coercion, just talk, just engage. So what the government has done, because the people express ignorance in this new machine, A, the ECR, B, the GST, there was this fear. And from a sociological point of view, from Bulen, we need to understand we state of mind, we culture, we background in terms of the things there, are, how we can become ap apprehensive. We don't read detail. We don't read much. We look at things just from the surface, not from the bottom. But if we were to scratch the surface, we will actually see what is at the bottom. So in this case, the government decide for engage stakeholders, the people them generally, in this case. And once they engage the people them and tell them exactly what the situation is, the fears of the people largely has been allayed. Fambulem, this has been a TNN Media Empire production, and I've been your host and presenter, Prince Emil Kroma. And um, I want not forget for tuning tomorrow for the sons and the founder of the Sons and Daughters of All People's Congress, Mr. Sam King, will be here having a discussion. And I guarantee you now it's going to be hot. Those of you that are watching on YouTube, do you want to not forget for subscribe to the platform? We need to be subscribing. We need to be showing solidarity for ourselves. See what's happening in Ukraine? Even inside war, they're still discriminating or showing us outright racism that we are all running away from war for our lives but they will not allow us to join the wagon even though they say women and women went forward they deprived them of joining the wagon that should they come hopefully this sunday so on keep tune in behalf of the then and now tnn media empire platform me now on a host and presenter prince emil Kroma. they say good night thank you so much and goodbye